stories about Africa, and most of the time these are negative stories. All you hear about is diseases, uh, poverty, conflict, wars, debt, but that is not really the whole story. As an African American, a lot of times we're given a very narrow and particular narrative about Africa. And some people are like, oh, these people are suffering. We are not looking at Africa as, you know, the poor, the lost behind continent, the people who don't have opportunities, etc., but really kind of meet on eye level. Africa is a beautiful continent, a continent of great people, people with great hospitality. I was super enlightened because I didn't know so much about African history when I came here. We're in the eastern region of Ghana, participating in the Global Citizens Conference hosted by the Melton Foundation. Currently, six universities around the world in China, India, Ghana, Germany, US, and uh, Chile. The fellows emerge out of these universities, go through a two and a half to three year experiential learning program where they develop their skills and capacities as change makers, as ethical leaders, as global citizens. Being able to go to places, experience places, meet, meet different people in their, in their, at their homes, in their communities. Are you ready? I've been participating since 2005 in different projects and with different people and in different countries. As different cultures interact with each other, there's bound to be some disagreements and some discomfort. It's a learning experience. Many things go wrong. Probably things happen that may not be ethically correct. Yeah, I learned how important it is not to, um, I mean, to remember that a human is not a product. Uh, I don't take that into account, it can be highly inappropriate. So the Melton Foundation, because of its model, it forces you to interact with others in a way that most of us never had to before. It's not about pity, it's about co-creation. Like co-working with them and supporting them in their has been initiated by members of the community itself. How do we prepare the students as we do a design thinking about a product, how are we making sure that we're thinking about the complexities of entering the community and thinking about the indelible changes that we introduce by going in? I came here from Virginia by way of Ruston, by way of New Orleans, by way of Africa. The foundation helped create some curiosity about exploring you know, my identity as a black man and all of the layered complexity that that entails. At the moment in Cape Coast Castle. The castle you're looking at right now happens to be a slave castle. It was built here by the British, 1665, but it served as one time the headquarters of transatlantic slave trade, and it's actually the biggest slave castle. These sculptures, each of it represents a person that was held in the dungeon over the years during transatlantic slave trade. Particles, feces, urine, and a whole chunk of stuff will be here. They will come and cover it up with sand. The people will have to come back and sleep on top of it. And aside this very man, you can see lots of others that look very real. My experience here has been life-altering and incredible. It's like touching ground and reconnecting to the place where we come from. But because we were intentionally forbidden to explore our identities. A lot of African Americans are still having a conversation with themselves as to who am I, 
where do I come from, who do I come from, what are my contributions to civilization and to society as a whole. Those that tried escaping from the castle sometimes, they resisted everything. And the Europeans decided to bring them in here to the female punishment cell. In the female punishment cell, there were about eight women maximum. And with these eight women, this was the very place they had to sleep, urinate, defecate. Because of what happened to us, you know, I don't necessarily belong here. But given the current crisis, even back in the U.S., it's not clear that I actually belong there either. I am loving my experience here in Ghana. Here is what I dreamed of. I've been a part of the Development Foundation for 11 years now, and it trips me out to even say something like that. Having African Americans from the Dillard University campus and the students that are from all over Africa from the Ashesi campus, we're in a position to not only have conversations, but to recognize some of our similarities, despite having been forced apart, despite having had to totally be robbed of the identity that we had before we came here. This was counter to the narrative that I had been told about Africa. Changing the narrative that exists in the mainstream media about Africa is an urgent task. We've been very deliberate, and that's why we chose to come here in the first place. Our cultural values are very important to us. When it comes to our dressing, our food, our music, our dance. So when you are over there, you probably would think it's primitive. It doesn't make us primitive. It doesn't make us uncivilized. We appreciate our culture, we hold it dear, and we will continue to hold dear our culture. It is something that has been passed on from generation to generation by our ancestors. And as a global citizen, this just reiterates to me that at, I mean, at the face of it, we might all look really different from each other because of our skin color or because of our accent or how we look. But when you start talking about issues that really matter, like climate change or sustainability or, say, poverty that are plaguing the world today, you realize that you really are no different from each other. You're all just the same. Which is really the only way of learning. If you hear it you know, firsthand and if you experience firsthand and if you, if you have an open conversation, respectful, and you meet in respect, you meet in, in unity, you can have a PhD and a master's degree and a tenure at, at whatever university. No lesson can teach you the, the personal interaction lesson in the conversation. 